Hi everybody and welcome to Inside Tiger Football presented by Rib Crib along with the coach of the Broken Arrow Tigers, David Alexander. I'm Charlie Hannum. I'm glad you're with us as Broken Arrow is 3-0 and as the Tigers finish non-district play. Coach, coming off a great win Thank over you. Owasso Friday night. Just what's the energy like with your team right now? Wow, Charlie, right? Um, great, obviously, man. Uh, these kids, uh, they're seeing the fruits of their labors. We've asked them to work really hard. Um, and they're going out on Friday night and they're performing. They're playing hard um, and they're getting the results that all that hard work has, has built up to. Obviously, we, you know, after 3-0 and start and that non-district schedule we had, uh, things are rolling pretty good. Bye week for the Tigers this week to rest and prepare for district play. Luckily, you don't have to do a whole lot of healing. How are you on the injury front? You know, besides a few bumps and bruises, not too bad. Um, Caleb Scott, uh, our, one of our safeties, uh, bumped his shoulder again this week. And he'll probably, he's going to need this week to may, maybe get ready for jinx. Um, but he's really our only injury. That's great. We'll look yeah. at the Owasso game coming up. We'll talk with Thor Wilbanks. Yeah. And then we'll set the stage for the rest of the season. But first, I want to pay attention to today being September 11th. And just right. kind of... Let's go back to 2001. What, what do you remember about this day 17 years ago? Um, well, I was taking my oldest son to school, elementary school, and my, you know, the radio goes, starts going crazy and, you know, something's up. And not really sure when the first plane hit, right? They didn't know exactly what happened. You know, explosion, maybe a plane hit it. Um, I drop my son off, I get back home, and my wife is sitting on the couch just with her mouth open. And, you know, so we sat there and we watched the second plane hit the, hit the second tower and um, of course I had a lot of friends up there. I'd, I'd, I'd lived in New York for a couple of years and just a surreal, right? I mean, uh, and then they start talking about terrorism and all this stuff and you know, I think Kathy and I, I don't think we left the couch that whole day. Uh, sit there just trying to take it all in and understand what happened. It's crazy to think that you know, 17 years ago now, I mean, right. a lot of your players, we've yeah, reached the point yeah. they weren't even alive and yeah, if they were alive, yeah. they surely don't remember it That's happening. Right. So how do you use the events of that day when you talk to young men and coach them and I'm sure you'll take some time this afternoon to talk about that. Yeah, we will. I've got a little video that I've shown. I shoot when I was a teacher, a math teacher. Uh, I show um, and I'll show it again today. It's just a couple minutes um, and it's a guy make it, doing a quick painting, a fast painting with some uh, patriotic music back behind it and uh, it's just, you know, I don't know, it's, maybe it's cathartic. cathartic. Cathartic? Cathartic. Cathartic, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Cathartic, I'm a football coach. For me to see the same thing every year, sure. right? Because the, the kids are young. But I just want to you know, remind them, you know, how, what happened, how we bounced back, you know, what we're about. And um, it's, it's uh, you know, we're, we're, we're lucky to be in this country. And then, but, you know, we got attacked and, and it's, it's a monumental moment in our lives, right? Because we were, you know, we, we right. remember it, we saw it. And so we want to keep, uh, keep that alive in the memories of these young men right, in my football team. You get to see it. It just uh, makes that partnership we've started this right. year with Quick Trip and Folds of Honor for the hometown hero mm -hmm. hit home even more because, you know, this day 17 years ago is what spurred a lot of our hometown right. heroes That's right. into joining the service. And now, you know, they've sacrificed and, and their lives are changed and our lives are changed because Perfect of that. Court. So it just kind of, right. it just really brings everything together. So. Yes. A great point. Um, the Folds of Honor, the, you know, that was kind of one of your little babies that you started here for us at Broken Arrow, Charlie. And, um, you know, you, you mentioned we were at administrators this meeting this morning and you were talking about the one we did for the Union game. And um, it's always an honor to, uh, to you know, represent, the, you know, talk to them about those people and what they've done and how they, how they sacrificed, you know, we, and the little video we saw about how um, the TED Talk we saw this morning about Right. Uh, how a team of the Army or the Marines, you know, the armed forces, you know, they turn things around where they're doing something for a greater good. And uh, it's, it's always great to honor those people. Absolutely. And we just found out a few minutes ago that our hometown hero for the Jinx game on September 21st is actually a Broken Arrow graduate. So oh, that's pretty cool. I know he's fired up to be here with his family and we are uh, certainly looking forward to honoring him in the first quarter of the Jinx game. So make sure you're here and, and dialed in for that. And you can be a wingman, just 13 bucks a month at foldsofhonor.org. Uh, we'll take a break on Inside Tiger Football presented by Rib Crib. We'll look back at that big win over the Owasso Rams and chat with Thor Wilbanks. Coming up, this is Broken Arrow Football. My kids had just uh, recovered from being sick, and I found myself sick. And it was time for me to get the care that I needed, and I didn't want to get the kids out of the house, so I used St. John On Demand. 
St. John Clinic On Demand is our innovative 24-7 virtual care clinic. It's accessible from your phone, from a tablet, or from your computer anytime. I registered for the appointment on my phone and visited with a provider and had a prescription called in for me all within an hour. So the type of patient that would use this service is someone that has a minor illness. Angela's case is a perfect use of our services. We came to her in her time of need versus her having to come for us. St. John On Demand is such a great alternative to loading the kids up, getting them to the doctor's office, waiting in the waiting room. So now I'm healthy, my kids are healthy, and I will definitely use St. John On Demand again. My name is Abigail Bailey. I was at my yearly checkup when I was 12, and we went and got x-rays, and she diagnosed me with scoliosis, and that we needed surgery as soon as possible. Tulsa Bone and Joint was very compassionate. They took their time with us. They answered questions. They, he was very encouraging. Dr. Clark helped me see that there is life after spinal fusion. Just because your spine is fused doesn't mean that you can't do what you love to do. Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football presented by Rib Crib here with Coach Alexander as we look back at a big win over the Owasso Rams Friday night. Coach, just impressive. Thank you. Yeah. What jumps out at you as you had a chance to digest it a little bit? Well, um, first off, it's another great environment, man. We've gotten to play in, in three great sold out stadiums. It was awesome. But the, obviously the play, the plays that stand out is our, our uh, offense will run the ball pretty much when we wanted to, uh, almost the whole game. And defensively, you know, stopping the run almost at will. Um, again, that's been the common theme of this team so far. And, and uh, the defense is flying around. We've got so many guys that are just playing so hard on defense. Man, some, and some names popped off the screen on defense this week. New ones, right? Colton Collier, defensive end, had a great game. Um, well, Marcus Selle is not a new name, but man, he was, he was again, another impressive night. Uh, four sacks. Campbell Yeager, our middle linebacker, had a sack. Uh, then offensively, you know, there were times, you know, we, we said, hey, let's, let's kind of open up here. I think we can throw the ball. And we're like, yeah, but I, you know, if we'll just hand it to one of these tailbacks, we're going to gain 9, 10, 12 yards. So um, running, the, running the clock, running the ball, stopping the run, was, uh, that's what jumps off the page at me. And yeah, we stay with your defense. Nine tackles for loss officially, three sacks wow. officially. Colton Collier had a sack, three tackles for loss. Caleb Scott had two TFLs. I mean, uh, Gavin Potter, again, your leader with nine tackles and a forced fumble and a pass breakup. I mean, different guys, too, just yeah, getting right. all over it. Well, and that's, that's the environment that Coach Hill, the defense coordinator, has created, right? It is. It's, it's competition amongst the defense to be the first one there to make a play. And when, you, when, when that is created, right, the, the, you get 11 guys, like I said a minute ago, just flying around. Um, and, you know, Gavin Potter, Marcus Selle, Jaeger, those three linebackers are flying all over the place. Um, uh, Bryce Machoda and Miles Slesher, the two safeties, just getting downhill or in the pass lanes. It's, it's a lot of fun to watch on film. And we talked about uh, Will Keeney, Owasso's quarterback, last yeah. week on this show. We talked about him in the pregame show. He'd been a, a threat on the ground for some other teams, and he really couldn't get anything going um, running or passing. No, you know, and um, I – we didn't completely shut him out, right? Like I said, he's a really he's a winner, and he made a couple of plays. But well, we really did limit him. Um, he couldn't run the ball, and that was really the only way they were going to have any significant success running the football was with him doing it. And we limited that, and he wasn't able to run the football. And like I said, one of the keys of the game, we were able to get pressure on him with sometimes just three rushers and sometimes just four rushers. And if we can do that and still play zone behind it. Um, we knew that was going to, we were going to have a successful evening on defense. And a great way to transition now to offense with the quarterback talk. Yeah. Quintevin Cherry, Ooh. Q, was yeah. all over the place. He was incredible. Uh, the young man, has, uh, he's got a great attitude, a great work ethic, and I'm just extremely proud of him embracing the role that we've given him. And now, you know, now that he's got that role and what he's done, we can start maybe expand it a little bit. But, you know, he made a great throw. Um, you know, not only was it a great throw, but it was just a great play. Step up in the pocket, kind of escape to the right a little bit and keep his eyes downfield. Um, but my goodness, he's so big and he's, he's uh, elusive um, for such a big man as well. And he just, he's hard to tackle. A couple of those poor safeties from Owasso couldn't tackle him at the end of the game and just busted off some great big runs 
and also had some shorter runs that were important to, to, con to convert third downs, especially there in the second half. I think there are some uh, defensive players for yeah. Wasser that woke up uh, quite so. sore Saturday morning. They might still be sore on Tuesday night after Quintevin Cherry ran 10 times for 156 yards, two touchdowns, also completed his only pass for 22 yards and a score. Just what does that style of quarterback do for your team as you look at offensive strategies and, and yeah. matchups and all sorts of stuff like that? Well, being able to play two, two guys uh, between Tate and Q that are complete opposite style-wise, um, that doubles the workload for a defensive coordinator and opponent, right? They're, they're going to have to work double hard on su um, Saturday and Sunday to put two game plans together. Um, and I think that's at our advantage. At least it's our advantage. Um, our, maybe our coaches get a little more sleep at night than our opponents' uh, defensive staff's getting. Um, and, and as Q's package expands, where he's going to throw the ball a little bit more, um, man, we're we're going to we're a tough matchup um, for any defensive coordinator. We can run it. We can run it with Noah. We can run. We can hand it to uh, Kewan Tolbert. We got Q that can run it. And we've got Tate back there dialing up um, defenses, getting us, uh, I think he was 100% on his line checks, getting us called to the right defense, um, getting us running strong, getting us run weak, uh, and play action. He did a great job as well. Steve Spavitol always talks about this as a defensive guy with me. You know, right. the defenses don't account for the quarterback when they're doing their run fits. And so right. when you have a quarterback that you have to, right. I mean, there's a matchup somewhere that works out for the Tigers. Well, and you saw it. We, we got them a couple times. A couple of those runs, you know, they, they were not only a, a hat short, they were almost two hat short. I mean, that's the defensive players in the gaps. And when you run, when you use your running back to block, that creates a gap on each side of the running back. And they just don't have enough guys. And um, if you can do that, even if they, the defense plays it perfectly, you're talking about a six or seven yard run. Noah Cortez, I mean, <laughs> we talk about him every week. We probably sure. will continue to talk about him yes, every week. But you know, 19 carries, 176 yards, three touchdowns, including that 80-yard run on the first play of the second half that really just kind of yeah. eliminated any real hope Owasso had yeah, coming yeah, out of the break there. Well, you know, you talked about it. I'm, I'm happy to talk about Noah every week. I, and I, as long as he's playing like he's playing, we'll, we'll talk about him till the cows come home. Because um, you know, he's put up really big numbers against some really good football teams here to start the season. Uh, he's our leader. He's our bell cow. Um, he brings the emotion to practice for our offense, and you know we're gonna we're gonna saddle up Noah, and we're gonna, he's gonna take us as far as we're gonna go. You talk about Noah on those long runs, but your receiving core too does such a great job. I yeah. look back to the 80-yard touchdown that I've watched a few times this week, and, yeah. and Matt Kaiser's down there, 70 yards downfield, still blocking yeah. that guy, and that's not a touchdown without those downfield blocks. Yeah, it's it's you know those 10 12 yard runs are never 80 yard runs without the receivers blocking, but coach Cochran has got those guys you know really really dialed in. That that play from Matt Kaiser was as good of a hustle play as I have seen in a such a long long time. Uh, the backside receiver, he's lined up at the numbers on the right and we're on the left hash. We run the ball away from him to the left sideline. And so Matt had to run, you know, 70 80 yards just to get into the play. And there was a moment there where he could have blocked the guy in the back, but he just kept running until he got in front of him and got a hand on him and escorted Matt in the end zone. And if you go back and watch the tape, as Noah's running off the field, there's a few guys that high five Noah for the great run, but about four coaches attack Matt Kaiser and pat him on the head and tell him um, what an incredible play that was uh, to get his teammate in the end zone. And that just kind of speaks to the character and the maturity of your yeah. receiving core in general because, I mean, you only completed four passes, right. kind of the environment that wasn't necessarily conducive to passing with the wind and the rain. And sometimes those guys can kind of check out and say, oh, well, I'm not getting the ball, but right. you guys are dialed in, well, run, pass, winning, anything in between. You know, winning is fun, right? And, of course, Matt Kaiser, a, he's a two-sport star. You know, he wants to win. Right? He wants to win. He wants the baseball team to win. He wants the football team to win. Same thing with um, Isaiah Keller. Same thing with um, Trayvon Client. They just want to win. Now, you know, the game plan, you know, we're obviously going to be a run first football team, but right all the whole week leading up to that game, the forecast was for torrential rain right. and high winds. Now, we didn't get the just steady downpours. We got the misty rain, but a pretty hard wind, pretty strong wind out of the north. So the game plan was thinned out on the passing game just because of when we showed up on Monday, we thought we were going to get five inches of rain right. <laughs> Friday night. So, um, but 
those, those guys are there. They'll do – Matt Kaiser and those other receivers and Coach Cochran will do whatever it takes uh, to help the Tigers win. The 47-20 win over the Owasso Rams Friday night. Broken Arrow now 3-0 and after that tough non-district portion of the schedule. Again, Tigers on a bye week this week. And then we'll host Jenks at the Woodshed September 21st. That's going to be a huge game again. Another great crowd. We'll take a timeout. We'll chat with Thor Wilbanks when we come back on Inside Tiger Football presented by Rib Crib. My dad's always saying a little extra effort now will really pay off later. Here's how you can put in just a little extra effort and help out our schools in a big way. Just switch your checking account to TTCU. It's easy. You get $150 just for switching. And every time you use your school pride card, TTCU donates to our schools. So far, over a million dollars. They're the only ones doing that. So make the switch to TTCU and be the person who's making a difference for our schools. The Tigers of 1929 tied for the Oil Valley Conference lead with rival Bixby Spartans. Broken Arrow's only loss coming at the hands of the Spartans, who finished their schedule with two ties and no losses. Apparently, Bixby wanted no more of our Tigers that year, as they refused a challenge from Broken Arrow after the season to play off the tie. This great moment in Tiger history is brought to you by First National Bank of Broken Arrow, a loyal fan of our community for over 100 years. First National Bank of Broken Arrow, the right balance. Inside Tiger Football presented by Rib Crib is brought to you in part by St. John Broken Arrow, Tulsa Bone and Joint, TTCU Federal Credit Union, The Arrow Group, First National Bank of Broken Arrow and Matthews Ford. Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football presented by Rib Crib. Joined now by Thor Wilbanks, Tiger senior guard. And Thor, just 3-0, and just a dominant start to non-district play. How's it feel to be on a team that's uh, just playing this well? It uh, feels fantastic. Like, uh, we really worked for it. Like, the past couple of years, like, every, like, the whole city's kind of been against us. And every time we come up on these big games in the past, like, the like people in the school and everything they just haven't been for us and like it feels good to like finally show them right and like show that we can like we, we can do this like we're three you know and like it feels like they have more support for us now awesome well i wouldn't be doing my job if i didn't start by asking you about your name thor what's the backstory there because we don't see thors every day yeah well my full name is actually thor wayne okay and Even better wayne is my grandpa's name okay and as far as the story goes like all that i know is that my uh grandpa didn't want me named after him because he said that I grow up stubborn and mean just like him <laughs> and so my dad was like well Thor Wayne sounds pretty cool just on the spot and came up with it so it's Thor Wayne all together yeah Thor Wayne Roland Wilbanks love it and are you stubborn and hard-headed like grandpa no uh, not quite <laughs> awesome just your offensive line has been playing so well and I know you guys have been playing together for a while it's oh, fun yeah. just to be up in the booth and watch all the pancakes you guys have I yep. know um, the numbers are just off the charts through the first couple games. Mm -hmm. What's that like when you go back and, and watch the film and just see your teammates just crushing it out there? Oh, man, we really relish on it. Like, uh, see, like the Owasa game, for example, 131 pancakes on, okay. like, 80 plays or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. It's fantastic. Like, us as a whole unit, like, playing through sophomore, junior, senior year and, like, really getting a feel for ourselves, like, it's, it's perfect. Coach, as a former offensive lineman, I know you have to take a lot of pride in Thor and just how that whole group's been playing this year. Well, of course I do, Charlie. Um, it's a great group of men. Um, we've, I've bragged on them since our preseason show, and I've told everybody in the state that, that this is going to be a dominant group. Um, and Thor, senior leader, uh, he's been – he started, you know, I don't know, he started probably 24, 25, 28 games by now. Um, so the environment's not too big. He goes out there and they, 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 they're just a machine, all five of those, six of those guys when you count the tight end. And then of course fullback, we like to run the football. So those guys um, have really gotten after it. And you know, you're talking about pancakes and that's, you know, that's our, an offensive lineman knocking a defensive lineman down, the offensive lineman being on top, right? Finishing the block. And um, if you can finish your block every time, just, just play through the whistle, 
uh, we're going to gain yards, we're going to hand the ball to Noah, we're going to hand the, the ball to those great running backs, and we're going to gain a lot of yards. Talk about senior guard Thor Wilbanks on Inside Tiger Football presented by Rib Crib. And when you line up against those guys in the third and the fourth quarter, can you can you feel it before the snap that they're worn down, that you guys are just having your way with them? Oh, yeah. Our, our offensive lineman coach, Coach Harper, he instills that in the very first quarter. He wants us to go out there and just dominate them. So that way, whenever it gets to third and fourth quarter, they're just ready to shut down. And they just, they've had enough. Coach, I know we've seen this three weeks now. I mean, you come out, you come out of halftime, and after that first drive, it, it's like the other team kind of just folds. Well, then you're just not expecting the physicality that we've come with, right? Um, you, you just don't see it in high school football. Um, the, the physical play that we're playing with on the offensive side of the ball is just it's rare. And of course, it's a rare group that, we've, that we're playing with right now. And you know, you saw it against Mansfield. Then it's a good football team, right? They've been playing down in Texas, and they play some great opponents. And that first drive was a complete shock to their system. Um, another great example is talking about being in the fourth quarter. You know, we got the ball, I believe there was eight minutes left in the Wasso game. And we went, you know, ran the ball every play right down to the one yard line, took a couple knees uh, to win the football game. There's no better feeling as an offensive lineman, right? Because I've been there than to burn the rest of the clock off and take a knee at, at somebody's one yard line. Tell me about the athleticism that your group has this year on the offensive line because there was this old school mentality of, you know, you put the big fat guys up front and let them right. block, but that's with all the motion and the pulling that you guys do, that's, that's not the case at all. No, no, it's not the case at all. Um, when I got here, you know, um, we had to change that mentality. You know, we hired a strength coach, Coach Ellett, and we wanted to get offensive linemen that could run, right? We, want, we didn't want anybody's belly hanging over their belt, right? Now, don't get me wrong, I, you know, you gotta, you gotta enjoy the eating to be an offensive lineman, and I'm sure Thor does, like all of them do, but, you know, we want to be able to run, we want to be able to move, we want to be able to uh, run stretch to the field and, and pull and, and, and pin and pull and do all those things we do. And you have to be an athlete. Um, and Thor and all these guys, they're just, they're just big athletes. They're just athletes trapped in, uh, in big man's bodies. Well, Thor, we'll get you out of here on this. Just tell us a little bit about yourself, what you're up to when you're not at the football field. Uh, not much, uh, study. Uh, I'm taking a few college classes right now, just trying to get a little edge on before I head up to wherever I get, end up going. Do you have something in mind you want to study in college? Yeah, um, I have a couple different things in mind, like I um, can't really decide right now. Uh, something dentistry or architecture or some sort of engineering, I'm kind of up in the air with those three things. Love it. Well, Thor, thanks for being here. Enjoy the bye week, and uh, yeah. we'll talk to you next week before Jinx. Awesome. That's senior offensive lineman Thor Wilbanks. He'll get $25 of Rib Crib just for showing up tonight on Inside Tiger Football presented by Rib Crib. Final segment after this with Coach Alexander. This is Broken Arrow Football. In the folded flag, we see the heavy price of freedom. Nearly nine out of 10 dependents of America's fallen and disabled soldiers do not qualify for federal scholarship assistance. The Folds of Honor closes that gap, already providing over 10,000 scholarships. Join us in this noble mission. Donate today at foldsofhonor.org. This is your call to duty. The 1982 Pride of Broken Arrow Marching Band had a spectacular and rewarding year. Led by senior drum major Paul Gerter and junior drum major Mindy Denton, the Pride and its members practiced relentlessly with the utmost determination and won the sweepstakes of the Midwest Championship in the Colorado Marching Band Competition, which was truly a great honor and led many to declare the Pride the grandest band in the land. This great moment in Tiger history is brought to you by First National Bank of Broken Arrow, a loyal fan of our community for over 100 years. First National Bank of Broken Arrow, the right balance. Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football presented by Rib Crib. Final show tonight on the bye week. Don't forget a week from Friday, the 24th, the Tigers are back at home to take on the Jinx Trojans 3-0 versus 3-0 and should be a great matchup. Coach, final segment. Right. Just what do coaches do on a bye week with a rare Friday night off? Yeah, we're a little bit lost, right? Because we're such creatures of habit. But um, we'll all kind of disperse and go watch some other football games, watch some of our opponents, or 
right? Like Coach Harbor's going to go watch his dad play. His dad's the or coach. Dad, his dad's the head coach at Berry Hill. Um, so Friday night, we can't do without football. We'll all be some stadium somewhere. So with the week zero and the bye week, this is the second year to go through it now. Right. Uh, fan of it? Want to keep it around, or would you rather start a week later? Well, boy, it's a coin flip, right? We're, we want to play the Texas teams, and our calendars don't match up, right, the way Texas and Oklahoma do it. So we're, right now, we're married to zero week uh, playing games so we can keep playing the Texas team. And uh, so it is what it is. You know, we just uh, rework our schedule. You know, it'd be nice to have a little more, you know, uh, scrimmage time, but the heck with it. We, we love it, and uh, we're going to make good use of this, this bye week. All right, Coach Alexander, thanks as always for the time. Congratulations course, on you, being 3-0. and We will see you next Tuesday for Inside Tiger Football presented by Rib Crib and then one week from Friday, September 21st, back home, Broken Arrow and Jenks. Should be a great showdown to start district play. For Coach Alexander, I'm Charlie Hanema saying good night from Broken Arrow.